everyone we're back finally uh and today we're going to do the finishing off touches of baby liam which i'm so so excited about yeah mind my little pigtails and my pokemon shirt i just thought i'm just getting in there let's have some fun today and enjoy our last journey with this baby the paint journey by the way we're still going to continue the journey um with everything else he needs all the way to him getting put together basically and birthed um so he's looking pretty good um if you look at him like i don't know how well you guys can see via the video by his details and everything but when i look at him here i see a lot of detail and i'm happy with that so that's really cool he's already got a little bit of an attitude oh yeah okay so when we i like i said i want to finish all the painting today so right now what we're going on to is we're going to go on to the darkening of the mouth inside the ears inside the nostrils the lips um go through all of those bits that we want to darken up again then we're going to go over the lips again just to that's going to be finalizing that we're going to check if he needs a second crease um, and then we're going to do the finishing oh we're going to also do the little nail tips and then we're going to do the finishing caramel layer so excited like can you see it in my face <laughs> I really am so let's get to it I need to pull you apart from your body again I'm so 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 sorry but let's okay so now he's all pulled apart and you know ready to be painted some more so we're going to do that maroon layer that I always make and then I often make a mistake with so we'll just get the red out let me get some brushes here so I'm going to use two drops of red I hope that screen is looking okay feels different today it's very overcast outside it's still hot guys uh, but it's overcast so I'm trying to do extra light from uh, my tripod and um, yeah without you know it going silly so if you know what I mean so then we're going so we did the two drops of the red now we're going to do the smidge of blue now remember that's just like a pin head it's not even a drop it's just like literally a color on the edge of the palette oh that might be too much I can hear some kookaburras in the distance so let's hope they come closer I'm going to take some of that out I'm just going to do it that would be better yeah that is actually really good it's it's a really nice dark red if you can see over here i've taken some blue out so i had just a smidge too much blue that i wanted just got my brush took it out put it in there uh and like wiped away uh which left less blue so that worked out really really well i'm really happy with that Woo! it happened first time yay <laughs> it always doesn't just remember i you know i mean i'm sure there's some absolute perfect reborn artists out there that get it right first time every time but in reality you know if we want to get it perfect sometimes we need to sort of have a little bit of a fiddle so don't feel bad if you you know you just keep getting it wrong or something you know you're not stupid you're not crazy you're not not destined to be a reborn artist it just sometimes in life things have their own mind and own purpose and we can't change that so just let's think that so i'm going to use four thinning drops one two three four now don't forget if you're working with heat set paints you're doing pretty much the same thing um just a swipe on one side of your brush of your genesis red little smidgen just a little smidgen of your thylo blue uh ooh, just my brain is going at the moment but thylo blue o2 i believe it is um and then you'll just go in with your odorless solvent um to fill the palette that's all you're doing so we're going really well there so i'm going to fill my palette now with some water and i need my little pipettes for that these pipettes are so great you know like i just can't say enough how handy they are to have around and they're so they're you know not expensive so it really doesn't matter if you know you have to you know throw them out because they've had too much color or whatever like that now i need to test this i'm sort of thinking hmm, have you turned out nice i haven't filled that palette with water i actually like about half filled it so i'm just going to test it normally i use a test limb 
um, as you guys know, but I think it's fairly translucent and I can do it on the ears fine. So I'm just going to paint some of that into the ear there. Oh yeah, that's okay. That's fine. I still want it to be translucent. I don't want it to go in and go, oh, yay, let's have a red party. You know, nothing like that. It's still just to be a hint and to help, um, you know, brighten the color in there. Now, I don't have to do too much on my ears. As you can see, there's already a lot of color in there. I believe you can see that. There's a lot of color in there. I, I don't really want to go stupid with that, personally. And my other ear is pretty much the same too. But, you know, just for task purposes, I need them to be exactly the same. So paint just in, just in all those sort of low points in there. Let's say the valleys again. Now, I do want to sort of do a little bit of controlled blending there. So I just want to control the end of my brush. I don't want that color to go everywhere. Okay. So that's good. I'm happy with that. How do you feel about that, Liam? Okay. Now, over time, he has got a few tiny marks on him um, from sitting. You know, it's been quite a long time um, just against things. It's got some little white marks here, which I really don't know what they are. Oh, it looks like it's just a bit of excess, um, like a drop of something. I mean, he's got a little purple spot over the other side, but that's okay. You know, like... I have a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh, it's got a mark and they just really frustrated. Yep, see that white's come off. They're really frustrated. They don't know how it got there. And that one came off too. Um, but don't get stressed out. If, if there's a mark there, there's not much you can do about it. I mean, you can go back and strip your kit. But that's, you know, a long process and can be really, really stressful. Um, normally, I just feel like it can be fixed with either a little, a little scratch um, you know, making a little scratch or a little birthmark or something. It's better to go forward rather than backwards, I believe. It just actually gets quite depressing, you know, when we have to go back on things. I don't know how everyone else feels, but that's how I normally feel. Um, so I fixed those marks. I've also got these little, um, that's like a little wooden pick with some cotton, like cotton that's really wound on the end. Um, a big thanks to Angela from Island Treasures. Um, everyone knows she's quite a good friend of mine. Um, and um, she put me onto these and I have found they are quite amazing in so many ways. Like when I'm painting now, I te generally have tend to have them close to me. And if you have some pooling paint or anything, you just sort of literally rub it on gently, rub, 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 and it takes it off. It just, it just works. I guess the friction of the, the cotton on the end it just helps so um, I can highly recommend them all right so now I'm going to go inside the nostrils again my nostrils are they're not too dark if you can see them there um, but they are prominent so I think to myself I don't I don't want to go over the top with them either so I'm just going to go inside them just a little splash and dash in there and then inside the mouth the inside of the mouth is what I sort of want to really richen up today um, that's my main priority, so to speak. So just a control blend in there. I'm actually even thinking um, I'm going to make a little bit more mixture. I want to make it thicker for inside the mouth. So I'm going to put two drops into that blue that I put there before. And that's worked well. I'm actually going to put th uh, four drops of the thinning. Just see how that goes. It's nice and thicker. I, I'm going to give it a go with that without any water. Now, people might say that's a little bit bold, but I'm pretty confident it's going to work well. Um, I'm going to get another brush for another kind of blend, and this is going to go inside the mouth. Now, everyone doesn't have an open mouth baby, um, but when you've got an open mouth baby, now you see his inside his mouth is darker, right? But look inside my mouth. <laughs> oh, that's a bit scary. Anyway, you can see it's dark, right? It sort of looks a little bit like an endless tunnel. Ooh, scary in there. Yeah. But it, his is sort of a little bit translucent. It's not so scary. We can see what's going to happen. So I'm going to just make that a little darker. Okay. 
mind you, this color has still, even though I haven't added water, it's still like really translucent tea. It's not, it's not really full on. And I think that's because the thinning medium, you know, has been added there. Now I'm with Liam, as you guys, well, not everyone knows, he has teeth in there. And throughout this whole journey, I have been painting over the teeth, but now I'm going to stop. Even though I'm going to be painting them white, I just think it's now time to just stop and try to go around them. Whoops, I just got some paint on his arm. Just get that off quick as we can. I'm not, I'm not being a little bit um, all over the place today, I feel. Now I'm going to squeeze his cheeks so I can get in front of his teeth just there. Squeeze your cheeks, Bubba. There we go. Okay, now if I get a little bit of paint still on his teeth, I'm not going to freak out. Like, it's still okay. Um, I'm still going to paint the white over them. Just with this little flat ed ended brush. I'm just going in there and pouncing. It, it gives that controlled, controlled because it's a flat brush. It's really controlled in the way I can sort of go in, in front of his teeth there and around his gums. That's still important, even though I'm trying to darken in here, it's still important to blend it. If you don't blend it, there will be um, paint in there that will pool and will dry in a pool sort of area likewise and it will then be silly and darken okay I think you can already see that's darker right I'm going to go over that a few times um, <clears throat> <clears throat> pardon me with my lighter mix there I'm going to go over the lips so this is going to be my lip color and the darker one is going to be my mouth colour. So there we go there. So I'm going to stop the, the recording there um, as I'm going to go over that inside of the mouth uh, a few times until I feel um, it has enough depth. Now it's getting there. You can definitely see that. Um, while we're still working with those colors, uh, you can go over any other darkening points that you want to um, deepen up a little bit. Um, I believe his hands, like his center of his hands look really good. I don't think they need to be deepened. Uh, both are quite good. Uh, his feet, normally I go sort of over the um, inner toes there. Um, I'm, I'm feeling that's dark enough as well. And that one is as well. So I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. Um, so after that, I'm actually going to do a bit of a red tip um, on his toes and fingers and maybe even add a little bit of that red to his mouth. So let's go. Let's keep going, richening up that mouth. Let's really work on that first and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm, I'm really, here I go again, I'm really happy with how he's turning out, la la la. Um, you can see that his mouth has definitely darkened there. Um, I even did a little bit more into his nostrils, so I'm really, really happy with that. Um, but I'm going to continue, I'm letting that rest for a minute. I've still got my paint here that I had um, when I was doing his mouth uh, but now I'm going to go to um, a different color uh, just the red uh, which I'm going to use on his fingertips toe tips and um, I'll go through to his mouth again so I'm just going to use uh, two drops of red I like the red a lot of people say oh my god red but when you paint on your baby with red it actually looks like a soft pink um, so it's a color I like to use a lot, um, especially when I'm wanting to bring up um, any, you know, blushing or anything like that. So it is a color I do recommend. I use it a lot. 
Okay, so two drops of red and then I'm going to use three drops of thinning. Actually, that went for four, uh, but that's okay. These things happen. Just going to mix that around. And I'm just going to check what I did. Okay. So then with the water, um, I actually... This is on step 16 I'm on if anyone is looking at their uh, booklet and I've added um, five drops of water. So that's because we don't need this paint to be too translucent. Um, we still want it obviously to be translucent and we may have to go over a few layers. Um, but we're trying, it's more of a detail, so we don't need it as washy, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to get like his fingers here, get a nice flat brush like I was using before. How's the best way you can see that? There you go. It's just a flat tip brush. Mix your paint with it. Take off any excess paint off the edge and literally just go over and paint every end so like just this end tip of the baby's fingers, front and back. This is actually my favorite um, part of when I do my babies uh, because I just feel it comes really nice. You can even go over the nails. Don't be scared of that. You can miss them if you want, but I've found going over them not to, um, it doesn't, make the look any different so i'm just going to get like a little little a cosmetic wedge just rip the end off so a little bit of jagged textured tip there and just gently pounce over those ends of the fingers we want to make sure that we don't have any pooling of course so get any any paint spread the fingers if you can don't let it sit there Okay, now this is a layer we're going to have to do a few of. So I'm putting the hand aside, let that dry while I go and do the other pieces. It's such a nice, it's such a nice part of it. Such a nice technique and looks really, really pretty. I mean, if you look at the, I don't know if you can see the top of my fingers there, but they're all like a redder color than the rest of my fingers. Um, and I just like it like this. Now, you don't have to do this, by the way. If you think, God, Annette, that's just stupid, then that's a, that's okay. I'll respect you in the morning. So just pounce off excess paint. Of course, if you can't pounce the paint, get a brush and get in there which I'm going to have to do. Mm. No pooling allowed. No pooling allowed. Because remember, if it pools, it's going to look like pen. Okay. Now over the same with your little tiny, tiny toesies. <gasps> Sorry, Liam. Just those little knobblings on the end. Excess paint off. Now I've got Amani is being watched by his great grandma today because Amy has a hospital appointment. So I'm really hoping that his great grandma, who's called Gigi, I'm really hoping that she doesn't contact me soon and say, it's time to get Amani because I really need to get on with this video with you guys. Okay, so last set of toes. And then we're going to go on to the lips and then the extra 
the extra paint we have to do on the um, toes to brighten them up, you're going to do as homework. Especially with the, any toes or fingers that are actually fused together, um, Liam's first hand, his toes, his fingers were all separate. But when they're fused together, you definitely need to get it in, a, in there with a brush. Okay, so you won't really see much detail, much change there then. So now with the mouth, again, I'm going to come in with that red mix we just made. And I'm going to go and paint over the whole inside of his mouth. Remembering that it comes up like a nice pink hue. Get in front of those teeth there. And then we'll have to floss them. So you can see they're dark. Getting darker. Uh, in the nostrils with that colour again. It's working really well. And also in the bottom of that earlobe. We'll make that darker as well. So I'm just going through that really quickly now. Just so I could show you. But we blend out with a controlled blending brush, especially in those nostrils, controlled blending brush, and then in the mouth, very controlled. So that's all looking really good, actually. Look at that. And look at the depth in the nostrils that just coming out, it's all coming together. So I've been using my really translucent mix uh, of the maroon that we made before, but now I'm going to use the red that we've just made and go over the lips. Ooh, pretty. Oh, Liam, you look great. So I'm just going to focus on that. I don't want to make a mistake, guys. So just go over the lip line. Looking good. Gently with your cosmetic wedge. Once it's had enough drying time, just gently pounce. We don't, we're not taking excess, we, we're just taking the excess off, I should say. We're not taking the paint. Okay, so that those lips are starting to richen up again as well. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video there again. So now your homework, until I get back in a second, literally a second, uh, all the fingertips, all the toe tips, do them over again with your red. Keep working on the mouth, the nostrils and the ears. Once you're happy with it, though, stop. So um, like say the ears, I'm really happy with that. I'm going to stop on the ears. I'm not going to keep doing that. The nostrils, I feel pretty much the same. I want to still darken a little bit more inside the mouth and do the lips. So keep going until you get that look. Now again with my fingertips, you can see all the tops of my fingers are a nice pink hue. That's what you're wanting to create, okay? not We're not going Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer here. We're going just a nice soft pink hue, which makes it look like the baby may have been crawling or doing something extra on those fingertips, making those the, them red, more blushed. Okay, so do that. Keep your paint there just in case I decide to use it um, after because I want to blush it up some of his cheeks, maybe his feet. So keep your paints there if you can. Let's just go with that homework now and do that. Okay, how did you go? I'm really hoping by this time of your baby making that you have become to see, especially if you're air drying, that less is more. So going with a lighter colour and building up uh, the shades is so much better than going in hard and fast with a thick color paint and then having, you know, really gluggy, muddy looking skin. Um, really, really, really important. Now I wanted to show you uh, my little cherry red toe tips. Actually, it's not even cherry, is it? It's sort of like a strawberry. It's just it's just a hint. You might not even be able to see it that well. I can see it here. And then on the fingertips, see just that light pink hue. I really, really like it. It's very pretty. And on the last hand here, just a soft pink on those ends of those fingers. So it's really, really nice. I love that. Look how nice. I'm hoping you can see that okay.
it looks really really pretty and then as I said I uh, kept going with I went one more shade with the nostrils and I kept going with the lips and mouth really really happy with that and so I'll say inside the mouth um, during that journey I probably went over it about six times um, the lips uh, probably have gone probably over about the same amount um, and but it's coming up nicely it's just nice and you can keep going so I'm actually it's hard to really see from the point of view but I'm actually loving the lip color on Liam there I'm just liking the soft look but some people like more of a, a darker pink or a maroon even a brown um, you can you just do what we've been doing but keep going um, and if you find like you say if you're using red and the lips are coming up like too pink for you then you go in with a you know layer of maroon or even a very light layer of blue to it gives it a rich you might think oh blue lips my god it's gonna be cold no it does just riches richens it up but generally a maroon layer will be fine on that so i didn't have much paint left here i actually used all my red so um i'm going to have to mix up some more um, i'm excited because now we're on to um, the blushing in the second crease so what you need to do at this stage is get your baby and have a look at all the creases and work out can you see your creases if you can't see your creases you need to go over them again now if you can then you can choose whether you need to darken those creases or whether you're happy to leave them as they are. I'm actually quite happy to leave Liam's creases as they are. Um, I really, when, when the beginning when we started, I really took my time to go over them and over them again, like we have been, um, to just get that darkened look. Um, but yeah, you might even just see one or two creases that you just think need darkening. This is the time to do it, okay? So the blushing mix that I'm making now is called a blushing and second crease. So it's used for both. I'm going to sort of be looking as we go. So it's just basically what we do with the... Um, what we do with the... Um, yes! Yes, that's it. That is right. That's what I was, no, the, the maroon mix we've been using. So we're going to use two drops of red. And we're going to use a smidge of blue. I know, I know what you're thinking. When I get to this stage, I'm thinking it too. I'm like, oh, oh more maroon or whatever. You're thinking, I hate this color or something. I don't know. But, you know at the end of the day if it's what works it's good but this color maroon like i said is really dodgy it sort of sometimes comes out purple sometimes comes out maroon sometimes does what it wants to do and it's like oh come on you know gee i'm talking crap today i don't know it must be the pigtails let's just go with that okay so after your smidge of blue go four of thinning Go for, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't happening. <sighs> then we mix that up. Yay, it actually looked nice for me for once. <laughs> I'm serious about that. Hey, it seriously sometimes does what it wants to do. So now we're going to go eight drops of water. This one has actually came up more of a red maroon when before it came more like a purple maroon. So if you can see what I mean, it does have a mind of its own. But um, at the end of the day, you can I can either go back and use the maroon I made before. I can use that. That's fine. Um, or I can remix it. So, you know, don't be too stressed on yourself. And at the end of the day, when it comes out on the actual kit it looks great so just for purposes of those who are recreasing if you're doing your creases again remember how we did it before dip your brush in your crease color find the crease that you want to darken and go over that crease go over a couple at once that's okay 
And then with your blending brush, got to make sure this is dry because I was using it before. Actually, I might get a fresh one. Blending brush, there we go. With your blending brush, just, oops, just lightly pounce over the top of that. Okay, how do you like that? Good. Okay, so that's what you do. So if you're doing creases, you know, pause me now. I'm really an idiot today. I don't know. <laughs> I hope I make you guys laugh a little bit along with me. You know, like I don't like to be too serious all the time. But anyway, if you're doing creases, pause me now and go and do all your creases and then we'll work on the blushing together. Okay, I'll be waiting. Pause me. Okay, so for those who aren't pausing me and just wish to keep watching, keep watching, um, we're going to use that colour that we just made to do some of our blushing. Um, now I'm just trying to think of what brush I actually want to use. Because this is important. If you sort of go ahead and do your own thing, you're in trouble. No. Um, I'm going to, so when we talk about blushing, we want to blush up the cheeks. Um, we want to definitely um, go around the feet again, blush them up, hands if they need it. Um, but definitely, I find Liam's face has not got, I mean, it's got a lot of detail and, you know, definition of different colouring there, but it doesn't have that red cheeks that, you know, we often see in toddlers, you know, when they're teething and that. Now, when I say red cheeks, I don't mean, you know, red cheeks. I mean, like, just a soft blush okay so within saying that i'm going to check my paint i don't want it to be too much so i'll get my little test limb a bit oops and of course all my little fluffy things fall out so i'll just put them down there and fix that afterwards so just paint it onto like let's pretend that this is the cheek paint it on and blend it out okay that's worked nicely for me it's really really nice so have yourself a glass of water hmm got some ice in there and let's go ahead so i just have a flat brush use your favorite brush i always suggest that and what i do <clears throat> is i do like a nike tick on the cheek and then with my blending brush I simply blend it out remember just pouncing over it don't rub your brush just keep pouncing uh, you can elongate the pounce, like take it up onto the nose, take it down further onto the cheek. We're blending it out, blending it. So you can see that compared to nothing on that side. It's just giving a bit of a richer look there and it's very supple. Okay, I'm liking that so far. So I'll do the other side. <clears throat> Nike tick backwards Nike tick <laughs> and blend it out get anything around there just make sure you have a little something that can get it off like a little bit of fluff or something don't try to generally scratch it out with your nails okay getting there so the same sort of thing I'm going to go over that a few times um, what I'll do is I'll keep recording that and if I need to speed it up to save us some time we'll do that <clears throat> I also like to put a little bit of a center cherry but once again it's going to be blended out so just put a dot there blend it out 
counts out any excess fluid on your brush. Excess fluid will make it harder to blend. So it's just, like I said, it's really light. I'm just going to bring that colouring up. So I'm going to go with a Nike tick again on that first cheek. Basically, um, everyone's different. Remember, some people really want to have that rich strawberry cheeks. Um, <clears throat> But what I'm looking at doing here is just getting it like a pink hue, just so if someone was to look at it that they could see that there's like a shadowing of pink there. That's actually coming up lots better. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can see that. You can see that there's a lot of, it's all coming around and into that cheek area there like I said like a Nike tick but it's all very well blended do my other side <clears throat> remember keep mixing your paint as you're going and with like sometimes when we put the paint on we leave the kit sit for a moment just to let the paint sort of settle um, with this there's no need just go straight and blend it because we're blending it out it's going to be blended out if we let it dry it it'll dry even a smidge it might leave that marking there which will be harder to get rid of oh so pretty <clears throat> I'm gonna go down the nose there just one line even like take the excess paint off Make sure the excess paint is off the brush. Now, if, remember, if you've got to sort of exit out that area, that's okay too. We're just sort of bringing up the colour in these areas. I also like to do the chin. Take it on the chin baby Liam now you'll notice I'm still calling him Liam because I have to wait till he sort of gets a little bit further along before I name him he might be named Amani uh, because he is sort of made in likeness of Ma Amani to some kind of degree I'm not sure and I don't even know what's happening with this baby will he become a part of my family Will he be sold? I'm not sure. Just going to wait and see. I'm going to do on those tops of those ears. Uh, my ears on Liam here are just a little bit yellow. Um, not hugely yellow or anything. But I want that to be more of an um, undertone. So I'm just going to go over the top there. Nothing, nothing scary or anything. Just... A soft blend and we'll do the other side so we have a matching pair you really have to you know look outside of the box you know don't just go on what I'm saying have a good look at your kit and think to yourself you know does that aspect of the baby look right could we improve it? Um, sometimes, like I said, just doing some nice soft layers of red or another colour, whatever you need to do. Red's obviously the most colour we use. I'm going to do the cheeks again, guys. Um, yeah, you just the red can richen up the area, make it brighter, make it more alive even, you know. Sometimes we have a look, it's just a bit too um one colored we need to we need to that's our main priority as being an artist is bringing that baby to life which means sometimes just don't 
don't go by a schedule. Don't stop where you're told to stop. Sit and think. Play with it a bit. Bring it to life. If that means you have to take longer, you have to take longer. If you have a customer waiting for your baby, then you need to explain to them, like, you think these can't be rushed. They can't be rushed. You need to, you know, be allowed the freedom to create. I mean, you're an artist. When you're making these babies, you are an artist. You are the artist of that baby. You know what's best for that baby. Go with it. And I'm sorry, but if the customer doesn't like it, well, they really can't buy your baby because you can't you can't be rushed. A rushed baby might turn out with mistakes. Um, I always did not like that when I was rushed. I've been so lucky and so blessed over the years um, lately to get customers who understand my situation and are happy to wait until it's um, going over the nose again which is, it's really important for me because my lifestyle is really hectic, really hectic. Like, I'm here in my house this morning by myself. That never happens. It literally never happens. Um, so, you know, I, I can tell you right now, I would much rather than be sitting here, I'd much rather be sitting, watching a DVD and having using some of my alone time. Everyone loves to have their own own peace and quiet. But I have made a commitment to you guys and to baby Liam um, to work on this baby. And um, I will commit myself to keep doing it until he is done. Until he is done to everyone's like, so to speak. <laughs> Here we go, Annette, talking garbage. But it's not really, is it? I mean, like, we're just chatting. You're probably chatting with me now, saying, come on, Annette, just get with it. No, you guys are really good. I've just got to thank you all so much. You've all been so patient. I mean, I know, you know, there's between videos, for those of you who are watching it, you know, live time in, you know, 2020, I uh, use a really patient people who are watching it later. You're quite lucky you get to watch the next video straight up. But for the people who are with me now when I'm actually creating it, um, sometimes there's a month to six weeks between videos and I don't get anyone harassing me and saying, come on, Annette, where's the next video? There's nothing like that. I'm just patiently waiting. So I really, you know, have to thank you all and let you know that I really appreciate that quality in you guys. It does, it takes the pressure off me. Now for something different, I'm going to paint the temples. Just one on that side, one on this side. Blend. Now as you can see, we're sort of really spending um, lots of time on this head to get the blushing right. He's coming out really good. Look at his little face. Oh my goodness. Now, I think I'm going to do a little bit more just here and here. Bit of an Aussie war cry. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> just to bring up a little bit of colour there. This is so good. I'm really loving working with you guys today, especially. I don't know whether it's because I've got the house to myself and I'm, you know, can just say, hey, no one's here. Ha! No, oh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Maybe I need to take a pill. <laughs> no, I'm just happy. I'm really happy. Now, can you see how that's just, just come up a little bit more rich there? I love it. I'm going to go a little bit more up here. Come on, bub. So I've just done sort of like a triangle up the top there. Now remember, you generally don't have to go on to the back of the hair. 
um, depending on where you're going, this baby is actually going to have, we're going to be implanting hair on him. Um, so his head is going to be completely covered. I could do some hair drawing if I want. Um, I haven't actually decided yet on that aspect of him. Um, I do want to show you all the options you can do, but yeah. Yep, I think we're just about done. I'm going to leave that sit for a moment um, because as we've spoken about before, the colours are air dry, can richen up as we leave it sit. So let's go to those palms of those foot, those really lovely parts of the foot we just just like a money's feet so you're literally doing that like in a letter c just around there and blend that That's looking great. But of course, like everything, we will be doing that a few times. Less is more, remember? Backwards C, forward C, whichever way you're up to. Okay. Then we look at the palms of the hand again. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a C on the bottom of the palm there. You could say that's even a U. Yep, a little U. A little U at the bottom. It's like Amani. He goes, you, you, you. You, you, you. I don't know. Guys, seriously, I hope everyone doesn't think that I'm a case today. I'm just, like I said, I'm just really happy, happy to be getting onto this for a start. And I'm trying to let off a bit of my positive energy onto you guys. Give you a laugh. Have a laugh at an Aussie today. Okay, so I just like did the hands there. I off, oh, the little, little, I always like to do onto the elbows and the knees again. actually another favorite part looking at that part of the body and just seeing a little bit of a shading so do all the elbows two of them <laughs> which we have And the knees. One of those blending brushes is a bit better than the other. If there's anywhere else on the body you would like to blush up, you can do it. You don't have to follow me. Some people might like to do a little bit on the top of the foot there or if there's a if it's a baby that's a little bit chunky um you might want to go in you know richen up some of the little chubby rolls that can be really cute so it's wherever you want to blush okay so i hope your creases went okay if you had to do the creases before i hope this is going okay too you might have had to make uh, mix up some more paint that we did, and that's fine as well. So now we're going to stop for you guys to have some homework. Go and just do what I did. So the, the feet, the palms of the hands, the elbows, the knees, and wherever you need to go on your face to give it a nice blush tone. He's looking really, really lovely. Really lovely, aren't you? So that's really great. So 
do that um, and then we'll come back and we're going to do the nail beds we're going to do the mouth and the lips again I know you're saying again but this is it might not need to be done again we just need to you know you know like literally triple triple check we're happy with that final product before we move to the next okay so go and do that now you're doing great Okay, guys, get excited. Like, seriously, get excited. We're at the last layer of paint, which blows my mind. So this is the last layer of paint, and then we're going to finish it off with doing those nail tips and the teeth in my limb. Okay, so we're going to start with raw sienna. Um, so the same sort of aspect goes for if you're working with heat set, you can use the same colours and you should come out with the same outcome. Um, so obviously we're using raw sienna and then we're doing um, burnt umber. So we're using half the quantity. So if you were to do, say, a swipe of raw sienna on either side, one, two, and put that in your bowl, then you would just do one side of the burnt umber. Okay, and that should, you know, bring you up with a nice caramel tone. Um, because th this is a toddler kit, we really do need to add more um, because we're going to be painting all over it. So I am doubling the mix. So if you look in the Magical Realism book that we have, um, we're up to step 19. And the first part, it says to use eight drops of the raw sienna. I'm actually going to, you know, double that. So that'll be really cool. Okay, so... Go with 16 drops. Let's go. And I do it in the center of my palette. I don't know what everyone's using. I'm using these palettes. I do it in the center because I'm making a bigger mix. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 16 drops of the burnt sienna so now with the um burnt umber actually not but that wasn't burnt that wasn't burnt sienna that was raw sienna i apologize so with the burnt umber we were going half we were doing four drops so we're going to do eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, eight drops of the delicious burnt umber. I'm going to mix that around because I want to. And it's going to come up like a milk chocolate colour with a yellow tinge. That's what you want. Um, 12 drops of the thinning medium. So that means we go 24, don't we? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, that went a little bit far. Nineteen, twenty, I would say. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Okay, mix all that together. The thinning medium will sort of make it lighten a smidge. But that's basically the colour we want. Then we're going to add water. What do we do? Fill the rest of your paint well with water. So this is a big paint well, so I'm not going to exactly do that. I'll show you what I do do. So that's 2 mil. Mix that around. That was 2 mil of water that I just added. Gonna go another two mil, two mil. So that's four mil of water. Now I'll do it on the test limb just to make sure 
I don't have that mixture too thick. This is again, it's a, like a wash. Um, we don't want it too thick. Yep. Okay, that's good. And pounce that out. Excellent. That worked perfect for me. So if you're using your center well, well you can use four mil of water. So we're going to just start on the back of the head and do the whole kit. So we're literally like we're back in the beginning when we're just doing the washes. We literally paint it directly on and blend it out with a blending brush. Oh, that's already richening up the colour. Great. Okay, so you're going to watch me now speed this version up because all I am doing is painting. Good luck with it. Make sure you get over every aspect of the, the kit. Don't leave any backs of ears or anything unpainted. And make sure they're all blended well and you don't get any running paint. Um, once you finish, you can look over the entire, entire kit to see if you've had any runs. Okay, go for it. to leave it there with my baby today but of course it's not going to be the end of it for you now you may have seen me scrubbing my brush like this throughout the journey of that um, final layer it's very important we want to get off any excess um, fluid off the brush as we're going so that we can blend it properly that's the main priority how do you think I mean that caramel layer is always my absolute one of my absolute favorite layers because it really brings out ooh, all so many colors in that baby and it's really great um you can do another layer of that if you like but generally i think it doesn't need it it's normally pretty great um make sure now when your kit is just before it is fully dried that you go through and you inspect it you make sure that there isn't any pooling of that caramel layer in the toes, in the creases, anywhere. Um, that's really, really important. We can fix it later if we need to, uh, but it's generally the best time to do it now. Okay, so do that. When I come back, which will be another day, more than likely, unless I come back this afternoon. When I come back, um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do those nail tips. We're going to do Liam's teeth and we're also going to do any inconsistencies in the kit. So over on this side of the, Liam's face, he's got like a purple dot. It's really unusual because it doesn't even look like paint. It looks like ink, which I couldn't imagine where that actually would have come from. But it's the tiniest dot just beneath his eye there. So I'm going to turn that into a little bit of a scratch. Um, he also has a light inconsistency on one of his legs just a little brown mark 
so I'm going to turn that into a birthmark. Um, so after we do those bits and pieces, we're then going to do the matte varnish and then we're completely done with him. Um, I probably won't come back and finish those last aspects of him today, um, mainly because this boy has been through the ringer today. He's had, you know, all the blushing done, his lips done over and over again. Um, and all that needs time to cure. I know that air dry paint, you know, it cures really quickly. You know, it can cure within 20 minutes and everything. But I think, you know, like a reinforcement, it's always best to, you know, just leave it sit overnight at least um, before we continue with it. I'm really loving all the colours in him. I really, really am. And you can see the difference in his actual skin to the base there. Uh, you'll be able to see that that's a lot different compared to the rest. So we're going to leave him at that today uh, for me. Uh, you'll see me in a minute when we come back and do those other bits of it. So let him rest though. before For your baby, make sure you now let it rest. You need to let it rest. Overnight would be best, my best recommendation. Uh, then we come back, we do the nails and that, we let them rest, and then we do the matte varnish. And with the matte varnish, I specifically like to give it a good resting period, like a week. Um, I know it cures fast, and you can go on with that, but generally leaving it longer is going to protect it and really um, protect your paint and let it seal properly. Okay, so let's go on to doing the nails. Go. Cool. Okay, guys, I hope that you can see all this really well because it's kind of upside down on my table and I can hardly see it. But I thought with the nails, what I'll do is get in there close for you so you can see the bowl and see the nails really close. So for the nails, we're going to do two drops of the Flesh 08. So if you're using the heat set paints, just do like a small swipe. You can see how much paint is there. There's not much at all. Uh, and then we're going to use two drops, sorry, four drops of the white. So double the amount of Flesh 08 doing white. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to give that a uh, mix together. Now with the Magical Realism, we used to use a thick medium, but just didn't find it really did much. It didn't give it any extra, if you know what I mean. So we decided just to mix the paints together and it was just as good um, to have it the way it is. We didn't need anything else. So... That's the way I do it now, and I find it perfect. Okay, so whatever way you want to do it, um, if you've got a better idea or technique, then I say go with it and at least, you know, see how you're going with the whole thing. So I've got little Liam's toes here. Hopefully you can see them. Really little and fat. And what I'm going to do is literally just do the nail line. Now again, please forgive me if I don't get this in properly. I'm trying to look at a screen from upside down and it's kind of not really working work very well. I might do one of the hands actually. The Oops, camera just moved forward. I'm doing the hands because I think that they might be a better to manipulate under the camera right now. Okay, so I literally just, you all know this anyway because I'm sure you have all been working with reborns for a while most of you just getting those extra tips uh, obviously if it's a really hot day this is going to dry up very quickly but at the moment it's kind of cool which is nice because it's early in the morning so I'm just going to do a line along the top of the nail a bit difficult because this isn't right underneath my face so mind any shaking or anything got like a little um, disposable pick here which I keep on hand just to neaten up any little messes I may make. Whoops, I just took a little bit of paint off there. Just get in there. That's good. Okay, now I'm going to do the next nail. It's good, obviously, when they're still in kit form because you can really manipulate their fingers to move to where you want. 
You'll notice uh, little Liam's skin tone is very similar to mine. Um, I'm not sure if that is that noticeable on screen, but just with me sitting here with him right now, I'm noticing it extra that he is very similar to my skin tone. Shaky, shaky. Okay, now also when I'm doing nails when I'm not showing anyone, I've talked about this before, I have key anchor points for my hands. Now at the moment, one of my anchor points is this wrist here. And you'll, if you could see properly, you would see that that's what I'm doing with my wrist. And I'm making it, let me try to move the camera just oh so slight. Come on camera, work for me. It doesn't want to. Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, I'll just do it this way. So that actually, that is working really well. Um, so that my hand on the table there is my anchor point and it's keeping me a little bit more sturdy. My other anchor point is my hand on the other side. So it's actually keeping me really sturdy. It's hard because like I said, I'm, I'm working over the top of myself, which normally I would um, be a lot closer. Normally I'm not having to pick up these excess little mistakes or anything. But, you know, things like this is good good to have around, if you know what I mean. Um, another thing I often don't work with, I mean, I, I work with these, yes, I do. But my favourite thing to work with is something that's absolutely free. Oh, look, my nail has some dirt in there. Sorry. That is disgusting. Must have been after I made everyone breakfast. I'll just work there and do that nail. Hopefully you saw that okay. Um, but what my favourite thing is, which is free, is my own fingernails. Now sometimes, of course, our fingernails are too short because they're annoying or something. But normally I'll just get my nail in and I'll sort of flick away any paint. There's none on that one, but I'm just trying to show. Just flick away any paint or if there's an over edge paint I'll just sort of you know nail it down and get it away with my nail and it works really really well and like I say it's free we don't have to buy a new one of those so I'll just just do this other fingernail here whoops that was a little bit of a crook crooked line now that's okay so there we go there um I think that looks all very good so that's how I do my nails so now I want you to go ahead and do all your nails on your baby that's your homework right now and you know then all we have to do is the matte varnish on little Liam so let's go in and get to that now let's do finish our nails okay so we finished the nails uh, and we're now to do some uh, the teeth. I forgot to do the teeth when I was doing the nails the other day, so that's what we're here for today. So with the teeth, I'm, I want a bit of an ivory white. I don't want like a really, really, really white. So what I'm going to do is get your flesh 08, and I'm just going to use like a small drop. I'm not going to go crazy with that. Oh, I've already got some paint on my fingers. <laughs> and I'm going to go four drops of the white. One, two three four give that a mix okay that's quite good actually but I think I'm going to add another two drops of the white that went down very quickly yeah that's that is better like I said I don't want white white I don't want it to look unrealistic so I'm going just uh, an ivory off-white. Okay, now I'm just going to get a little alcohol pad. I use these little alcohol pads if I get paint on my fingers or I actually use it for cleaning off my palette and things like that. It just cleans so well. So just get any, I don't want any paint on my fingers when I'm going to be holding the head. And give my hands a shake 
I don't want excess alcohol wipe on my fingers. I want them all dry. Okay, so then we're going to get Liam and give him some teeth. So I might speed this up depending on how I go, but I'm just going to do it nice and quietly. Um, so that's why I'm not talking. Let's put some music to that, hey? Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how his teeth are looking. Um, you'll notice at all times I either used <coughs> his head as an anchor for when I was painting or even the actual table. So I'm feeling quite happy with how he's looking. His teeth look quite smiling and cute. <laughs> he looks so cute. He looks so different at the moment. So yeah, that's how I'm going to lift, lose, uh, leave it. Um, you'll notice that during that time I used a needle. Um, if I went out of the lines of his teeth, I would just sort of get in there and sort of try to um, lift any excess paint that I didn't like in certain areas. It's quite difficult um, to get his teeth, I found, because although you can see them there, um, they're not a, like a perfect tooth shape as such. So you do have to you be mindful and um, sort of work the best you can to make those four teeth come out nicely, I think. So that's where I'm going to leave it there, guys. So um, now is the time when you look at your kit and you need to decide um, what else do I need. Um I'm trying to decide at the moment whether I want to give another um, colour onto his tongue just to make it a little bit more dark as such. So I'll probably do that um, as my sort of touch up. If I do, I'll do a light layer wash of blue and then a light layer wash of red. So I'm not necessarily going to do that on camera just in case I decide not to do it. But that's what I would do if you're doing a Liam and you're saying, look Annette, I'd love to I'd love to do my mouth again. I would suggest a wash of, of blue, that's a thylo blue, um, just on the tongue. Um, even on the roof of the mouth you could do it. I'm just going to clean off my area and then I would do a wash of the uh, just the red um, but other than that I'm going to just leave the teeth settle that's my main priority at the moment so I'll leave them for the day and then I'm going to do the whole kit with a see how nice this just comes off so the whole kit with a matte varnish see it comes off nicely then I can just wipe it off like that and any excess spots I can just get another alcohol wipe and it will clean it like new sorry just went off a bit off topic but then um yeah so then I'm going to do the whole matte varnish so I will do the matte varnish with you guys on video just in case anyone has any questions uh so let's just go to that now shall we nice and clean good let's go Okay guys, so we're up to the last stage of this this part of the video which we are actually matting, doing the matte sealer on baby Liam today. Exciting, I know it's really exciting. Um, it's been a long time coming. I know some of you have been waiting for a while. Um, so after we do the matte sealer on this baby, we're going to obviously leave it to really cure for a few days. Um, and then I'm actually going to be implanting hair on Liam so stay tuned for that afterwards it'll be a big process and we'll probably do time-lapse photography on that not a hundred percent certain yet but you can look forward to that 
before he actually gets put together. Okay, so due to the whole COVID situation, um, air dry matte varnishes have been really, really difficult to get. And a friend of mine found this product, Americana Soft Touch Varnish, and it is a really, really nice finish on the babies. Really, really nice matted finish, and it's just a nice feel about it and everything. Um, generally, uh, with my Magical Realism paints, I would use Deco Art Ultra Matte Varnish, but that is just, it's its impossible to get at the moment. So we're using this one. I've tried a few different matte varnishes, uh, recently done some tests and everything. Um, this one came up trumps and worked really well. So if you've got a jar of this, if not, um, obviously use what you have, uh, but if you have a jar of this or are able to get some, it's it's really, really great um, and go for it. So when you open your jar of matte varnish, something like this, you will need to give it a good stir, good mix up because otherwise it gets to a gluggy consist consistency. So a good mix. I've had someone previously mix it for me, so I'm ready to go. I've just got one of these little disposable bowls here sauce bowl so i'm just going to put some in there it's quite expensive at the moment this product cost me um it was about 60 dollars from america so um i'm not going to i'm going to be very careful about wastage but he's such a big boy so um a good amount still in the bottom should be all right so i'll just put the lid on that don't want it to dry out or anything of sorts um, I'm going to just use the end of a cosmetic wedge. You know, you always see when I'm using the cosmetic wedges, I often rip off the ends. I don't throw them away. I use them for moments like this. So basically just paste the matte varnish onto the end of the sponge. And then just pounce it on. Make sure it's pounced on nice and evenly. A nice even thin coat um, you'll be able to see if you've got any like leftover blobs anywhere so just even it out nice straight coat all over the whole complete kit so it's fairly easy to do it's just a little bit um, of pain on your arms because you've sort of got to hold it for so long and make sure everything's nice and smoothed out now uh this varnish is it's a really great product and i really find at the end it's a, a nice finish um but i do suggest you know especially if you've got a baby that you really love go back after it has cured for a couple of days do another matte varnish if you're up to it um, it can't hurt and it just seals and protects that layer of paint that you've worked so hard to do so now go and cover your whole baby with the matte varnish even getting into the mouth area ear area um, you can have a designated brush that you sort of pounce into those little creases to really make sure it it's all evened out. You don't want to leave any blobs behind at all. So go now and do that and um, we'll show you the finished product when it's done. Okay, so we had so close to the end, but I wanted to do one or maybe two more little add-ons before we complete what we're actually doing. Um, I told you earlier that little Liam had like a very, very small purple dot on the side of his face now i'm not sure how that came apart about it almost looks like ink but i you know checked the area in with he where he was and there was no pens or anything around him at the time so i do not know why that came about so what i wanted to actually do now is just go ahead and um, make like a little i'm going to make just like a little pimple on the side of his face there or a little red mark so what we need to do for that is I'm going to use, my paints have fallen over there, uh, some red and some thinning medium. I need to get myself a little brush and then we can work through it. Okay, so I'm not going to go overboard <coughs> with anything at the moment. I've got some water here. Put some water into my little cup there. And we're all good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to use one drop of the Magical Realism Red. 
don't forget if you're using uh, Genesis paints, all you need to do is just do a small swipe of the red. It's a very strong colour. So we can use that. So one drop I'm going to go with. One drop. Then I'm going to use three drops of the thinning medium. Okay, one, two, three. Give that a little mix about. And then just gonna add two mil of water. Now this might come out a little bit translucent, but I'm not trying to get a really dark um, red tone colour. Uh, so then we've just got a cosmetic wedge here. I've just, got, I've just torn the front top end off of that. And what I'm going to do is with a, a brush about that size, just something that sort of I can really control the end of. Um, not something really small, but something that I can do like a round spot with. Basically, I'm just going to go where that little purple dot is. I'm just going to sort of tap around it lightly. Now, this will take a few um, applications to actually bring it up, but it's a slow process. You can also tap on with your sponge just to get any excess colours. So I'm going to do this quite a few times until it brings up that colour. So what I'm actually looking at is there's going to be a spot there. Um, oh, the size of the spot won't be much bigger than the head of this. It's just sort of like going to be a small round dot and it's just basically going to look like a blush, a small spot of blush in one position. And then in the center is where I'll create like my, I, might, I think I'm going to do like a little pimple there, um, but you could do like a little scratch or a little red spot in the middle. I'm going to do like a little pimple. So if you see there, I sort of just, I'm just sort of focusing around that little spot. I'm going to do that a few times until I get the effect I want and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so if it's taking a little bit longer like mine was, I ended up making a tighter mix. This was just with one drop of red and one drop of thinning. You have to be really, really careful because, of course, it's really, really thick and it goes on and you don't want it to dry thick um, as you want it to dry just like this. So it's like just an inconsistency in the skin that's sort of focusing out like a little uh, pimple or something would. So I can generally, generally I would use this this one here but this one worked out very fast and um, that's sort of what I wanted to do at the moment so you can go either way but if you do go the stronger mix you need to be ready um, as you can see when I've taken paint off there it's come off directly stronger and it's a little it can be a little bit um, if you don't get to it in time or you're in you know really hot weather or something it can you know you can go to wipe it off and it can stay there as a big red mark and you've got no way of getting out of it. So I do more recommend something a bit more diluted, maybe not as diluted as I did the first time. Um, like I say to you many times, it's a bit of trial and error, error when I'm working any time. Um, it's winter at the moment, so this was really quick. I just put it on, I put a few specks on and then I just pounced it out really quickly. Okay, so next I'm going to work on the little pimple, um, which I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to wipe that out, I think. Let me see what I can do. 
all my wipers are drying up because as you probably realize I haven't been in my bathroom for some time my daughter had a baby and um, unfortunately it's taken a lot of my time up um, which doesn't allow me to get into my special place okay so I'm just going to put that brush up there for now on my brush rack um, here I've got a Flesh 07. I normally would prefer to use a Flesh 08, but I don't have any with me at the moment, so I'm going to improvise. You use Flesh 08. So I'm going to use just a dot, just a spot. I think so. Okay, just that little dot there. And then I'm going to use white. This will help tone down my Flesh 07, but generally I would be using like one spot of Flesh 08 and like about a quarter of white. Okay. So I'm going to just mix those two colours there and it should make, yep, just a nice off-white tone. Now I don't need to add any more to this <laughs> because I want a thick mixture because I want it to go on just like a little pimple. So you can either use at this stage a very, very fine brush like I have there. This isn't super, super fine. Or you can use a needle. A needle I use very often, especially if I'm doing um, the heel prick on the foot. I'll just get a little bit of the paint on the end of my needle and then I'll just poke it into the position I want it to be. see that just there you know it's ever so we don't want it crazy we don't want it crazy big and stand out ish so I normally just do a little dot like that and then with my cosmetic wedge I just pounce on just lightly just like this it starts to sort of take it off can hardly see it so keep going again do it a few times when I'm doing this I'm actually going over that actual purple spot that I had earlier but I'm still pouncing it out because I just want it to be very natural looking and quite often pouncing it will give it that it'll get to a natural look okay You can see it's just that white little spot there but as you can imagine I don't want it to just look like someone's gone and put a white dot on the face that's not where I'm heading with that so what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm pretty happy with how it is there but it still needs some <coughs> excuse me some a little bit of red around it just to sort of inch it up a little bit to make it look a bit more realistic so I'm going to let that little white speck settle there for a bit and while I'm letting that settle, we are going to have a look at the limbs. Now I spoke about the limbs earlier, how there were some inconsistencies in some of the limbs. Um, and this is where we rectify that. So I generally don't tend to let anything just be as it is, if you know what I mean. Um, I want to sort of work to fixing it up so you'll see there's a little little spot here um, that was left behind now that's pretty good it looks like a little um, a freckle or a, some kind of spot there but I'm going to add a little bit of um, burnt umber to that just to make it look a little bit more like that looks a little bit scratchy there I check the other arms this one is nice good no problems check the legs this one is good it's got a little bit of an inconsistency just here so I'll have a look at that and then this leg also has a little bit of marking just here so for that we just get the 
burnt umber or you can even use a flesh o2 <coughs> so just give that a shake up i'm just going to use one drop of burnt umber three drops actually yeah three drops of thinning medium one two three i will make this um this application like a thicker application like i did with the red the cool weather is going to allow me to do that that's for sure if you're at home it's hot weather and you're not really sure um how your kit will take to a certain um, grade of paint um, i always suggest use your test limb just do it on your test limb first and see how that goes it'll always tell you the truth that is for sure i'm going to use a little bit more of my cosmetic wedge here so let's say for that little inconsistency there and i just want to create a small um, birthmark in the area so I just sort of tap on the bird umber and pounce it out. <coughs> you can paint it on if you need, especially if you want to do a certain, uh, like on my thigh, for instance, I had I still can, you can barely see it, but a little oval shaped birthmark um, from when I was little. I will show you what it looks like. Not on me, but on this baby. Um, very much like that. <clears throat> I have that in the center of the top of my thigh. Um, I hated it my whole life, but that's what it looked like. So I'm going to sort of get that sort of look on this. Now the main thing we don't want is edges so that's why we try to pounce it out fairly quickly it doesn't matter that you're pouncing out the color and that the color's coming off what you want to make is something like that that just looks like the skin has a birthmark or a freckle i'm pretty happy with this as it is actually going to work on it a little bit more just remember your main part is we don't want to get any solid outer lines so you can even use a brush to flip that out I do have one solid line there that I'm not loving but see how you can see all this looks like it blends into the skin up there there's a little bit of a solid line but that is sort of where the inconsistency in the paint was there so I'm just going to try to make that work with me <clears throat> Just keep adding the paint there, which will <clears throat> blush up that area in the darker color, allowing it to look like it's blending. Now, mind you, the birthmark that I had on my leg looked like a little, like like literally a stamp. <clears throat> it didn't blend into the rest of the skin; it was just a solid line. So. It can have a solid line. It won't, it won't look silly, but um, you know some people don't like it as much. So that's sort of how that is looking, and I'm liking that from the distance. So I'm going to leave that at that. This little one that I have on the arm, I'm just going to fill that in just a little bit because I can see little lines in there. Just ever so small amount.
just like that and that's done that's all I wanted for that just to fill it in a little bit then on this leg there was a very small mark and it's just this one up here just up here it's very small I'm just going to turn that into a little freckle as well nothing major literally just that so that's all I'm going to do just to make that sort of blend in and look like it's a part of the skin and I'm going to go back to the face now and see what we can do it settled really really nicely and it doesn't look too much like just a white spot there which is what I wanted so I'm just going to add a little bit more red there around it and even over the top of it going over the top of it will give um, blend in with that white spot to make it look like there's actually red in the white spot a little bit and that's exactly sort of what I want it to look like okay now I'm pretty much feeling that let me just fix this for a minute I'm pretty much feeling that that's sort of where I want to stop with this Liam I don't want to go any further I fixed the inconsistencies that I can see in his skin that will make it look a little bit more realistic other than a mistake um, so that's all you have to do just work on those little areas what I'm going to do now is let those areas this one here set and then I'm going to do a matte sealer over that again just to protect my work and make sure it stays there that's all we have for this episode now so I'm so gl glad to tell you guys yay we finished all of the paintwork we have completely finished so from now on you can either go to go and put your baby toddler together if you like <coughs> or you can keep working with me I know the whole video system of this takes time but next we're going to be working on to his hair we're going to be probably doing some time lapse photography working on his hair I'm going to go all the way through that and then when we're finished we're going to um, put him all together and you'll be with me on that journey if you wish to so thanks so much for everyone's support thank you for your patience in waiting for the videos to come up I hope you like how baby Liam is looking I, I actually do I think he's really really cute and I can't wait to see him with his hair so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of making a toddler reborn bye happy reborning <laughs>